pleasure to have you for the day in the life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, so we're here in Bluebird Healthcare because big announcement, 11 years in business and you've just scooped up a huge award. Yeah, yeah, we're delighted, Siobhan. Just recently awarded uh, the best large business in Bluebird Care, UK and Ireland. So to 233 offices. So we're, we're very proud of it, proud of it for our, our team, to be honest with you. Our, our uh, office support team here, our community care team. We have 180 plus carers and nurses out in the community that are delivering the highest standard of care and proud for them really because it's their efforts every day. It's nothing got to do with me really. It's more down to them and uh, really proud to get it. It's just nice to get it, you know. Yeah, but you're the one doing all the paperwork now, Brian. I don't have any hours you put in. <laughs> Uh, and your lovely new building here as well on the Callan Road. A uh, fab fabulous location. How yeah. It was a plant hire place and now it's a care area office. Yeah, I think it's had a good few changes over the years. Like I'm actually originally from Callan, so I think it's a bit appropriate that it's on the Callan Road. We've had a few changes of office and it was actually my mum said to me, what do you think about buying this was for sale? And I thought she was mad, but my mum is always right. So. Uh, Bought it and uh, yeah, got planning permission and changed into the office and we're delighted, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's comfortable, there's a bit of parking and uh, you know, it's working well for us. So yeah, thank you for the compliment. Yeah, well the interiors are good. Do you do them yourself? <laughs> Unfortunately not, no. I'm a bit of disaster in that area, so you got a bit of a help, yeah. Well, you've had a busy time of it at late, and especially with COVID and everything, a lot of elderly people needing care at the moment. Yeah, yeah, there's huge demand. I mean, I think most people want to stay at home. There's fantastic nursing homes, you know, really, really fantastic ones, especially in the Kilkenny area. And if that's people's choice, 100%, but people should have the choice to stay at home is what we believe. And if they, if they choose to stay at home, then they need to get the best standard of care. So we work in partnership with the HSE, uh, a really good relationship with the HSE, and we support them for their clients and also people privately. And if people want to stay at home, we provide that care with our, our wonderful team of carers and uh, give people that option. Okay, so that's the main service? It is. Yeah, well, we, we prefer care, care for actually people of all ages. We have kids at home with complex care needs, you know, okay. kids with tracheostomies, kids that are on ventilator, ventilators, and they're cared for by nurses now. You know, very strict care plans, very strict clinical governance to make sure they're very, very safe. Mm -hmm. But those kids want to be at home with their families as well. You know, instead of being in these great hospitals like Crumlin or Temple Street, bring them home. We've had kids with very, very severe medical uh, conditions at home and care for very, very safely. Then all the way across the spectrum, we care for kids and adults with disabilities. I think from a few hours home support to give parents a break uh, to older people, you know, older people that, you know, maybe they have something like dementia, mobility issues, or just need a bit of help in their old age, you know, that they, they've, they've worked all their lives and they just need a bit, of, a bit of a break, people to do a bit of cooking for them or whatever else it is, we're there to come in. It has to be safe though, Siobhan, you have to make sure your, your, your workers are vetted properly, that they get all the right training and they feel supported by the team. So we have a nurse-led clinical governance team here, everything is, is, is signed off by nurses, and the carers feel supported. Simple things like having the right PPE, as you mentioned there during COVID, uh, and then going out and knowing that they can provide and make a difference for the clients. And that's what they do. They actually, if you're good at it, I couldn't do it, you know, uh, because it's a tough job. But if you're good at it, you just want to go out and make a difference. And that's what all our carers and nurses want to do. They want to make that difference, make people's life better, make them safe at home. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that. You, know, you, see, you should see them in their jobs. The compliments we get, the feedback we get, it's actually amazing, you know. So. Uh, it's them really, Siobhan. Yeah, I do a bit of paperwork and I'm okay at that. I'm, I'm used to most things, to be honest with you, but uh, I do a bit of that. And uh, it's everybody has their different skill set, I suppose, and brings, and, and brings it all together. And you're expand the team now as well. Yeah, we're growing the whole time. You know, as I said to you, we have 180 plus staff in the community, complemented by a, a team of 15 office-based staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're the biggest, one of the biggest care providers in the whole country, actually. Uh, but we try to invest the whole time to grow. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking to expand. We're looking for good people to join the team people that want to feel part of a team, to feel valued. Uh, flexible working hours is what we do. We work around people's lifestyles because there's no point saying you're going to do this 40 hour roster because people have things going on. Whether they have kids or loved ones to care for themselves, whether they have a hobby, whatever else it is, life is busy. Mm -hmm. So we just work around them and if a person wants to work five hours or 45 hours, we'll try and cater for that as best we can. It's not always easy as best we can, but lucky enough, we've, we've built up a, a fairly strong client base now at this stage, so we've quite a lot going on. Based in Carl, and Waterford. Yeah, so that's yeah, it. Quite a lot. Yeah, Kilkenny is our, our is, is, we're here today, our main office. Uh, we have a branch in Waterford, uh, we have a part time branch in Carlo, and we're actually going to be uh, expanding to Tipperary as well. Mm -hmm. So, quite a big area, you know, with Blue Care, a national company, and, and all over the UK as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot to cover. I mean, because people live in whatever village they live in or whatever town they live in, so you've got to make sure that the nurses and carers can go out on the road and support them in the right way. 
And uh, yeah, it's a big area, but it's, it's all part of a genome. Tell us a bit about Brian Egan. I know you're a Callan man, you're mad into football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from Callan originally, yeah. I grew up in Callan, uh, went to school in Callan CBS, and then ended up going to Dublin for college, studied law in, in college, uh, and then went on and did a, um, a higher diploma in business studies after that. Uh, and uh, then ended up going into banking in, in Dublin for, I was in Dublin for about 15 years, you know, so uh, then ended up coming back down to Kilkenny. I actually married a girl from Callan, so I shopped local, whatever it was, and uh, ended up coming back down to Kilkenny. Uh, like, her skills are very transferable. She's a teacher, and uh, she's a principal Kathy, down... Kathy, wonderful woman. <laughs> <laughs> she's teaching down in, uh, principal down in Munkai now, so only for Cathy, I don't know how we would have got by, but... Uh, she, uh, you know, we came back down, we wanted, we love Kilkenny, absolutely love Kilkenny, we wanted to raise our family here, yeah. so came back down to 2009, and that's what it was. But yeah, from Callan, back to Kilkenny now, yeah, love sport, you know. Uh, Usually involved with Evergreen. Yeah, coach, coach, Harry is 12 now, my oldest son, and uh, coach the under-13s, or tried to coach, you know, we've uh, better coaches than me, but I tried to coach and help out. I uh, would have played a bit of football, still play a bit of football, uh, badly, but play, um, and then, you know, lo I love other sports as well. I love watching, you know, rugby or golf or hurling. And I was never that good at some of them. Uh, I still try my best to play some of them. Uh, but, yeah, having interest in sports is good. And it's good you know, with the kids as well. You know, it's a good family team to do, yeah. yeah. So uh, Harry's 12 and Luke is two. Yeah. And um, lovely boys. I know them personally. Um, you have an amazing story about Luke's arrival into the world. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you got the ages bang on there. Uh, Harry's our oldest. He's twelve. He came along in two thousand nine. We we're over the moon, you know, our first child, uh, and he was born in Dublin. Still calling himself a little dub. When Dublin win the football, that is okay. sports Dublin yeah. in the football. Kilkenny into hurling, mad into Kilkenny, uh, and then you know that was great. Harry is born. They start planning more kids, and it just didn't go as planned, unfortunately, you know. And Harry was just, it couldn't be more straightforward, you know, and. Uh, Carry on, uh, Catty unfortunately started having miscarriages, so she ended up having eight miscarriages. She always got pregnant quite easily, but could never hold on to uh, the baby. And got as far as you know, 12, 14 weeks of stages. So it was heartbreaking going into uh, the clinic and being told there's no heartbeat. I, at the end, I, I couldn't even do it. So you know, Catty was going in on her own at some stage. So I felt you know, embarrassed, but uh, I just knew what was coming, I suppose, in some ways. And Catty was still the strong one doing it. But it got to a stage where there was no answers, no scientific answers why. That was the strange thing. We got all the tests, genetic tests, everything. The fetuses were always seen as healthy, but it came to a stage where they're saying, God, maybe it's not meant to be. Yeah. So we looked at various other options. We actually looked at adoption, which is, is now very, very difficult uh, in Ireland. Uh, there was very little uh, avenues there for us. And then came across surrogacy and decided we'd try and go that route. The big thing for us, Siobhan, I suppose, was uh, to make sure the surrogacy process was right, that it was good for the surrogate, it was going to be good for Luke, it was all going to be good le legally. Uh, and we're taking all the boxes. Whatever you do in life, I always say try and do them right, you know, uh, and just just hold your head up high, have high morals and do it right. And that was the big thing for me. So yeah, we went down. It's a, it's a tough process to go down and learn about. Brilliant, brilliant sister here in Kilkenny. Uh, yeah, Annette Hickey, she's absolutely unbelievable. You know, works with like she's driving it forward, making a difference. But we got on a WhatsApp group with a load of couples. There's women that cannot have kids because they've had ovarian cancer or whatever type of cancer they've had. So they deserve a chance to have a kid. You know? So we believe in it so strongly, you know, and you know to make sure the process is right as well, that the surrogate is happy, surrogate is happy, and that you know you're doing it for the right reasons. So we ended up doing it through Ukraine after all our research, making sure everything was right. Uh, went to Ukraine. Unfortunately, would you believe our our first attempt, uh, the baby had a, a severe fetal uh, issue. Uh, um, it was a heart heart condition and died at 22 weeks. So at that stage, we were saying. It's not meant to be, you know, and we stopped trying and uh, we were heartbroken, you know, but we kind of wanted a, a sibling for Harry, if possible, you know, but same, not being selfish either because we know, you know, friends that can't have kids, you know, so uh, we said we'd give it one more go uh, and uh, we had our eggs harvested over there and all that. And uh, lucky enough, Luke was born in uh, May 2019. He's, he's two now. He looks like Harry. He's like a mini Harry. <laughs> there, there's a 10 year gap, but they're like best friends. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's just... I think our family's complete, you know, so yeah. we're, uh, you know, we're really happy. And he'll be playing for O'Loughlin someday, please God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> Anthony does from, uh, you know, we tried to give him his porridge in the morning, but if Harry's having a, a bit of pancake Nutella, Luke wants it. He wants to be like Harry in every wow. way, so, uh, yeah, Harry plays for O'Loughlin's and football for Evergreen and loves it. So I'd say he'll probably try and follow Harry yeah. that way. Uh, and whatever he wants to do, Siobhan, it doesn't matter. Sometimes Harry, or Catty says, 
she, he, Luke's her, her little girl, so we'd be doing ballet, whatever else it is. I know girls are as good at sports as, as boys are now, but uh, we just say whatever he wants not to do. Better. If not better, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, better in most circumstances and everything in life, you know, that kind of way. But uh, we say, you know, just, just once he's happy, but I say now, following Harry is probably going to be a big, you know, big thing for Luke, you know. I know Lachlan's is just on our doorstep, you know, and it's a great club. And same again, everyone just out the road. So it's great to have great clubs in Kilkenny as well. So you know, we don't have to keep this in, but I'll, I'll say it and we can edit it afterwards. Um, I remember Kathy telling me a story um, when you were breaking the news to Harry that he was going to have a, another brother on the way. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, I, I think she said at the time, Harry was a little worried that his younger bro brother wouldn't look like him. Yeah. Like coming through surrogacy and she the way she explained it was fantastic she said well uh, harry it's just like we're mixing a cake here we're putting all the ingredients in in our bowl in the kitchen and we put it into the cake tin and we go next door because our oven's broken and we put it in the oven and then we just bring it back in and you yeah. know, we have our beautiful cake and it was just yeah it, 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 to me that it's wrapped up surrogacy. yeah and harry was like going on 10 at the time you know nine nine and a half ten and we wanted to be part of it but not absolutely, you know, complicate things for him or confuse him or worry him, you know, but we had to be honest. I think being honest with kids is so important, you know, and, uh, but Cathy had a better way of explaining to me. I, I wouldn't have come up with that in a million years, you know, but she told him that, but I remember then we brought him to Ukraine when we were, uh, you know, getting egg, eggs harvested the first time, part of the journey, explained to him, and uh, so we'd understood that bit, which was great, but then he had a bit of a setback. We were in the back of a taxi, and uh, he was kind of saying, oh my God, I can't believe my baby brother or sister is going to be in another woman's tummy. I can't take this. And that was, that was it. After that then, he, 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 he just literally thought about it a bit more. He came to terms with it and never looked back. You know, he understood it all, you know, Caddy's explanation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so natural then after that, especially when he looks a bit like him as well, like, you know, but yeah, it's, he's been part of the journey, you know, and strange thing for him, but he's taking his stride. You know, kids take things in their stride. Yeah. So we don't give him enough credit at times, yeah. you know, and uh, they just take it in their stride. They soak it up. And then they get on with it. They Brian, really do. You take things in your stride as well. You've had an incredible couple of years. I know you've set up this new business, uh, win a national and international awards, <laughs> um, the surrogacy, but you also have been going through uh, privately, and you want to talk about it because you want to raise awareness, but you've also yeah. been going through a health battle yourself that only came to light in June this year. Yeah, I have, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I go, go through any more challenges than anybody else. I mean, the business... We did it because I had to do it. I mean, to be honest, I'm not good at a lot of things. So I just said, listen, you're driving on to make your family comfortable in life, you know, kind of way. So that drives you on. When you have kids, it just drives you on anyway. So the business was really, really tough, really, really tough to, to get going. You know, the accountant told us after a year and a half, close the doors. He said, close the doors. It's, you know, you're losing money, you know, and we, we don't have a lot of money. So, uh, but we stuck at it and we just said, let's do things right. So I said to Cathy from day one, just do it right. Just do it right. And hopefully uh, it'll, it'll get there. And it has, thank God. But, you know, just coming on to your point there, yeah, you know, we had complications with Luke and all that and poor Cathy going through our, our miscarriages. But, uh, yeah, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer in June there, Siobhan. So it came, you know, came as a complete shock. You know, I was, uh, I play football, I keep myself relatively fit. I'm 44. You know, my dad actually had prostate cancer a few years ago, but it was, uh, it was you know, he had sur sur surgery and he, he's all good now, thank God. Uh, but I really didn't expect it, you know, and... Uh, yeah, 1st of June, diagnosed, had, had surgery, actually with the 11th of June, would you believe? It was quite aggressive, advanced prostate cancer. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, it, it isn't fully sorted now, so I'm going through more treatment. Uh, but great, great doctors out there, great nurses, uh, brilliant support. You know, you get to realise people are unbelievable. You know, friends, family, domestic support, you know, uh, unbelievable, you know. So I just feel I have to get through it. It's a new calling for me, I think. I'm please God, I'm going to come out the other side, you know. Uh, is technically curable, I, I believe. Uh, so I'm going to give them my best. I want to be there for the boys, for Cathy, for my family. Uh, and it's, it's sometimes you want to change things in life. How you do, you know, as you said, I work too hard sometimes. So it's a new way to look at things. You know, maybe I wasn't eating properly. I'm going to change how I do things that way. But uh, you know, it's not nice to get it. It's scary, and it's made me realise other people that go through the cancer journey. My sister-in-law, Aaron, had uh, had breast cancer. My dad had prostate cancer. Cathy's dad had cancer. I realise what they go through. It's the scare, like it's, it's you know, the uncertainty is, is the worst part, I think, you know, uh, realising you might be around for your kids, whatever else it is, uh, in a few years' time. And, uh, you know, all that uncertainty is, is really, really scary. And then obviously you have to deal with disease because you have side effects. You don't know if it can be cured and all that type of thing as well. So, yeah, it was massive. And uh, as you say, raising awareness is a big thing for me because I was 44 and in Ireland, really, 
45, I think you might start doing checks. I think the real rule is 50, mm -hmm. you know, but I really encourage people now. As you said, you were healthy. Yeah. There was no sign I had no at symptoms. All. I had no symptoms, yeah. you so know. How did you... Yeah, well, yeah, listen, this is a bizarre story, really, and this is probably tells you why, why, how mad life is. Uh, we have someone that visits the house, you know, and uh, she said to Cathy, I need to talk to you about something, and uh, it turns out she has a friend who's a bit of a, a visionary or a psychic, whatever else it is, and she said, my friend told me that she knows I visit your house, you have flowers in your garden or flowers in your cups, and my friend told me that your husband has to get checked. This is December 2020, and and Cathy told me, and I said, God, this is, this is mad, you know, because I believe in science, I believe in fact. Yeah, not the you know, stars. I don't, you know, I don't really, you know, that kind of way. And, uh, but I, I got checked by my doctor, got my bloods done to stop Cathy nagging me and giving out to me anyway. And, you know, and, uh, and even my doctor didn't really want to do it because, you know, he said, you're, you're relatively fit, you're, you're, you're healthy, you're 44, maybe you'll check your PSA bloods in a few years' time. I always got my bloods checked every year, mm -hmm. but the prostate bloods are different. You have to get the prostate bloods okay. checked, specifically. You know, I didn't know yeah. that. No, I didn't know that either. Yes, PSA bloods are called. So I got him checked, they were slightly up, very slightly. He got him checked again, they were up a little bit higher. Got an MRI, would you believe it was clear? Then got a biopsy and I was told on the 1st of June, I have very aggressive prostate cancer. And uh, Cathy was waiting for me in the car park at Whitfield and uh, you know, she was shaking. I, I think I was in a bit of shock, I didn't know what was going on. But uh, yeah, so a mad diagnosis. And so that's why I encourage people, just get your checks. I think once you're 40 plus, just, yeah. it's, you know, the blood test, I know it's a prick in the arm that you have to get whatever, but it takes two seconds. You're getting you know, your and everything else. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah, get it done, you know, yeah. get it done to people, you know, and, and, you know, the majority of people will not have an issue. Yeah. They really won't, but what's the harm in getting a check? I know you can't be worrying about these checks all the time, but, uh, and, and most people, you know, won't need it and they won't have bad news, but uh, if I didn't get that mad uh, kind of tip off, with prostate cancer, you know, I had no symptoms. I could still be sitting here with prostate cancer not knowing, mm -hmm. and then uh, it's very, very serious then, you and, know. Uh, and very, you're throwing everything at it, uh, you know, yeah. uh, the highly tech drugs and everything. You're even gone vegan. Is that true? Uh, plant-based plant diet with a bit of fish, you know, that kind of okay. So, and that's, you know... I, a big steak or burger. I right? am, yeah, I am. And I think, you know, steaks and burgers are grand for the majority of people, so I'm not, you know, not knocking that at all. But I think when you are susceptible to uh, prostate cancer, I've been reading a lot of books and research, you know, prostate cancer does seem to feed on testosterone, number one, but also animal protein. Okay. From what I've been reading, that's, that's my research. You know, everyone has to come to their own decision. So... Majority of people, you know, stay eating what you eat, not a bother. Yeah, come But if you're susceptible, I throw everything at it. So I've changed my diet. I'm going to get better in my, in my physical fitness. I can't play soccer at the moment a little bit because I don't want to get injured and not be able to go to my radiation. But mm -hmm. I'm going to do a bit of swimming or running, whatever else it is. Uh, get back playing a little bit of golf, maybe. Uh, but, you know, the, the plant-based diet is something I've, I've changed to. And it's, yeah, but it hasn't been as tough. It's mad. You're eating a mushroom burger or a plant-based burger. They're actually not bad, okay. you know. So, uh, yeah, throwing that at it, a bit of physical exercise. I'm on hormone treatment therapy mm -hmm. and I'm starting radiation in a few weeks time up in Dublin. So yeah, give it, give it everything, you know, try my best, fingers crossed, say a few prayers, you know, I think uh, you've got to believe that there's something else out there, especially after my diagnosis as well. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I think good things should happen to good people. I believe I'm a relatively good person, you know, kind of way. I want to be around for my family. I think the boys deserve it, you know, more than me, you know, the boys deserve to have a dad around, you know, that, that's, that's it for me, you know, and uh, that's, uh, you know, that's why I want to be around. I want to give my best, you know. Brian, you're, you're unbelievable. Your courage and you're inspiring and uh, no better ambassador to where, you know, this awareness that men need to know about it. As he says, you're only 44 years of age, yeah. um, a young family. So thank you for sharing your story with us today. Um, no problem. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, I'm an open book that way, you know, it's, yeah. it's important for people. Like same as the surrogacy, there are options out there for people, yeah. you know, uh, and then, you know, the, the cancer just get the awareness, you know, but... Yeah, it's just important. I think it's important to talk in general in life, you know, that kind of way. You know, people people just don't talk enough, and especially men. So, uh, and I would have been I would have been bad at that as well. So. Yeah. Well, there's no stopping you now. <laughs> yeah, you give know, my best. Yeah. You've opened it up, so thank you so much because I know this is going to help lots of people. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, Siobhan, and thanks for thanks for the time as well. And I suppose the big thing uh, when you mentioned first thing about the Bluebird Care thing, the big thing is to thank all the staff. You know, it really is, and our clients as well, and our partners in the HSE, but especially our ta our staff. You know, the office team here, uh, the nurses and admin team, but the carers and nurses out in the community that, that just go in and support the clients. They're just unbelievable people. They really are. Whether they do one hour, whether they do 40 plus hours, they're absolutely unbelievable. You know, and uh, you know, I just can't say that enough. And we appreciate it. You try to tell them, you know, try to look after them. Uh, you, you can only pay so much at times and all that type of thing.
but they're the, they're the real story behind Bluebird Care and uh, you know, so it's just a thanks to them, you know. And you, you and Eric are born leaders. So yeah, and my business partner Eric, I suppose, as well. Okay. Eric is... Uh, Eric's a, yeah, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's one of my best friends from college. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we dovetail well. We're different people. He supports me a lot. He's, he's an, an unbelievable support. And his wife, who's a, a chartered physio up in Carlo, she's an unbelievable person as well. The support network is, on, you know, is great. Uh, but he's a big part of, of the success of Uber Care as well. So mm -hmm. my dad had his own business at one stage. He had a garage. Down in Dunhamagan, you know, my brother has his own business, Pro Gas. He's a, he's a great business, and uh, he's he's one of my inspirations. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. And I said, let's let's try something. If it fails, it fails. But it increments in your head. You try something. You know, so why home care? You know, big change from banking. I, I'm I'm not good at most stuff, Siobhan. I, I don't. You know, I can't even pick up a hammer to pick up a picture at home. You know, that kind of way. A lot of people can do things like that. They're really really handy. So I had to I do something. Like yeah, I'm not sure now. I'm not sure. He's handy at a lot of things, but. Uh, but uh, I suppose just once, I researched a lot of things, everything from coffee shops to recycling to God knows what, something that I could do. And uh, looked at, at home care because my sister-in-law is a public health nurse and she said it was a bit of a need she felt and all that and would have read a lot about it, keeping people at home. And, uh, and then there, was, there wasn't a huge amount of a private business in Kilkenny. There was brilliant HSC staff doing it. Uh, not a lot of private business doing it. And I, I bought into a franchise, uh, had a little bit of redundancy from uh, the banking uh, when I was, uh, had to make the change. And uh, franchise, there's a little bit more safety when you're going out on your own. And inside at home care, let's just try and do it right. You believe in people staying at home. You believe in a high standard of care. And if you give it your best and it fails, then it fails. But there's, I, I believe there was a chance. And, uh, and a little bit more fulfilling as well. And uh, now at the moment, we get the feedback of people keeping people at home yeah. safely. And they're happy. They're comfortable. They're in their own home, on their own couch. It's not me that keeps them there. You know, it's the carers and nurses that keep them there. But you're part of it. At least yeah. you're part of it, you know. So, and you were joined then a few years after setting up the business by one of your best friends. Yeah, set up in 2010 uh, and then people say you're brave but it was out of necessity really as I said here, you know, uh, having to do something and uh, yeah, one of my best friends Eric who I studied with in UCD came on and joined me in 2015 and uh, I needed that, you know, it's a very intense business, we were trying to grow, uh, he's a very steady guy, uh, I trust him implicitly, uh, he came on and it helped us to grow you know, and add a new dynamic to the business as well. So yeah, he's, he's with us now six years uh, and we're partners and we're able to support each other, which is a big thing, having people support you. You dovetail so. each other in Bluebird. You dovetail in Bluebird, yeah, I never thought of that one, you know, so, and you know, we, logo. yeah, there you go, you know, so, but it's worked well, thank God, you know, a lot of luck along the way as well. You need luck in every part of life, you know, so it's a lot of luck, a lot of hard work. And I think the big thing is just saying, let's do it right. Do we make mistakes? Yeah, we make a lot of mistakes, but we try and change them. Do we need to improve? Yes, we need to improve all the time. But it's, it's, it's anyone that says they don't need to improve, I think that's where the problem is. You know, we try to improve, try to get better, try and learn, and there's lots to learn involved. But we have a great team, you know, and uh, keep driving it forward, and please God, it'll, uh, it'll stay going the right direction, you know? Brilliant, and then we'll just wrap up the end then, and you have to give me another line now. Okay. Uh, Brian, thanks so much for sharing your story today. Um, you had a lot of luck in life so far, a lot of hard work, a lot of love and a great family and network of friends. So um, yeah, things are going to be good. So thank you for sharing because it's really important to raise this awareness and that's key to why you're speaking today. Yeah, well, thanks for your time, Siobhan. I really appreciate it as well. You know, first of all, it was great to be able to talk about Bluebird and the award, uh, but raising awareness of things like surrogacy, people that are struggling to have families and all that, and there's options out there talking about prostate cancer and all types of cancer. and. Uh, being able to you know, get yourself checked out, I think is important as well. Uh, being able to talk to people, to support network, I think is important. You know, uh, but like now that uh, you know, I'm talking to you, I suppose it's a good chance to, to say thanks to everybody, you know, to everyone who supported me through this. Family are unbelievable. You know, I have a great family. Mum and dad are absolutely brilliant. I have a mad sister who lives in Gorey. She's fantastic, you know, great support. And, and my brother, John, but all family, all friends, they've been really brilliant. You realize what people are like in life uh, when you get a, you know, a, a tough diagnosis. But also a big thanks to Bluebird staff. I you know we talked about the award, very little to do with me, down to the team, the office support team here, the nurses, the admin team, they're really, really good people. You know, they really give it, give it their best, but then especially the carers and nurses, like those people are unbelievable. They're the ones that keep people at home. You know, during COVID, it was unbelievable. You know, they're at the forefront when we didn't even know what COVID was about. They were going in in the safest possible way, keeping people at home. Uh, and then even before COVID, not, you know, we're still living with COVID, they're out there doing their best, you know, and uh, I, I couldn't do that job myself. I just wouldn't be able, I don't have the skill set. 
uh, but they're able to do it, do their, they give their best, we try to support them. So a big thanks to the team, really, really appreciate it. And thank you. Okay. Brian, thank you for this day in the life.